Hey there, welcome to the Achievers Way podcast. My name is Isia Reitzema. The Achievers Way is a conversational podcast that chronicles the journey and sheds a spotlight on successful expatriates, successful business professionals of immigrant background. Our guest today is OCU KJ, an award-winning actor and musician active in both Hollywood and Nollywood. Widely recognized as one of Nigeria's most established actors, he has featured in several films locally and internationally. He's a recipient of six African awards and has featured in several award-winning films, including Two Brides and a Baby and Half of a Yellow Sun. Born in Nigeria, OC has an established career in Nigeria and Canada in the entertainment industry. You know, and you know, eventually be able to take back some things home and stuff. And just in my corner, as long as I'm doing what I'm doing, I think that will have the effect that it needs to. Because it's me, then someone else, then someone else, and that will be effect carries on. So, when you finally went abroad and you realized that there were certain skills that you needed and maybe lacked, could you maybe share some of what those skills? Were? Yeah, I. I mean, I wish that I learned French for example, as proficiently as I always wanted to. And I say that, I mean, I always went to Alliance Francaise, you know, I'm going to Alliance Francaise, I do want to A4, you know, and then I'll be gone for a month, two months, three months, and then it will hit me again. I'll be like, look, you need to get back to this thing, you know, and it's yeah. okay, A1, A2. And then you're also in an English society where you come out of French class, which are speaking English with everyone. So I never got around to learning it as much. No matter, and I went mm-hmm. to Alliance Francaise a number of times. I feel like that is a skill that becomes important when you come out here because you can find like a translation gig, you know, something yeah. that I'm still in charge of my time, you know, but I make money on the side. It's one of the things that, and again, this is because I'm a creative person. So I have to think about the things I can do that keeps me still pursuing my business. You know, yeah. and don't get me wrong. I haven't thrown French out the window yet. I think that at the right time it will happen, but clearly it's not the right time. I also wish that, you know, <laughs> I learned my guitar as proficiently as I did. I got yeah. the classes, you know, it took me a while. I couldn't afford a guitar for a long time. So everything I learned, I forgot. I still strum a few things. I still have a guitar in my house here, you know, but I don't know how to. And the reason I say that is because for some people, they teach guitar classes online, you yeah. know, they set up, you know, YouTube, so whatever, you know, there are people who, and again, this is from one of my friends, Niola, the musician. I don't know if you know her. And Niola Kimbo, yeah, she's, voice. yeah, oh exactly. She's a judge on um, voice. The Voice right now. Had told me about some other, you know, stream of income that I could have been able to make. It's like, you know, you write music. And I kind of used to write music, you know. And the reason I say kind of is it doesn't really vanish. I just haven't honed it in a while, yeah, you know. done it for a while. And then you put that music and then people, you might be lucky, people purchase them for, you know, films, TV shows, yeah. whatnot, you know. So things like that, you know. Or like a friend of mine who was a rap artist in Nigeria, you know, when he moved to London, you know, he had to go and learn how to do editing, you know, graphic designs and stuff, you know, Mm. and photography, you know, so that that's what he does to pay his bills, you know, and he's kind of still doing the rapping thing, but he's also pivoting because it's still within the same creative space, you know, he has time to do the rap thing and... I don't know if he plans to still go mainstream, but his photography is going well. You know, he's doing videography now. He's shooting his own music videos. You know, he's getting clients, you know, who ask him to come and do this, that, and the other. So stuff like that, that I wish that I knew. And it's back to this thing where you were talking about editing, where it's like, you know, if you knew how to edit, you know, there are a ton of websites now that are constantly looking for, you know, I think it was two days ago. I just saw here yeah, at the top five websites where you can find, and they will break it down and tell you where you can find options of whatever kind of job yeah. you're looking for. It's a case yeah. of what skill do you have? Yeah. But we went to school and we learned marine science. And how many years after learning marine science, I'm not doing a single thing with it. Yeah. Not one thing. I do agree. I do agree with you. Uh, I'm curious about your perspective on what a Nigerian man should expect 
if he decides to live a full life abroad. Oh my God, that is the things he should leave behind. Oh my God, the things he should be ready to embrace. That is such a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> From your perspective, because I can imagine that there is perhaps a man listening to us, and maybe he just moved and he's yeah. struggling between balancing being an authentic, traditional, maybe not even traditional, an authentic African Nigerian man yeah. who is living in accordance to the traditions of his people that he's always known right. and wanted. And if you're abroad in Europe, America, Canada, you know, it's not the same. And he might be having that kind of internal conflict. Yeah. And so I'm asking you <laughs> what you think about it and what you would tell him to ease his pain or suffering <laughs> <Okay>. or confusion. <laughs> you know, I think that I will start by saying that one of the things that fascinates me about the West mm -hmm. is their ability to always reinvent themselves. Yeah. And here's the thing. The reinvention is not always skin deep. It can be reinvention on the surface. But you see, the idea that you can be this person, live this life for 15 years or 20 years, and then one yeah. day flip it around and decide that yeah. this is the direction I'm going to be going now and can yes. actually make a life <laughs> out of that. And more importantly... Yes never count themselves out based on their age or their yeah. previous experiences. They just think, yeah. you know, you see 60, 65 year olds looking for relationships, yeah. you know, like, Oh, I'm planning to get married. And I think of the place I'm coming from where at 65, so, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> just, hang I'm your so, boots. just hang your boots and move on with your <laughs> life. Like, just keep you know what I mean? But it's one of the fascinations for me. And the reason that is important is because I think that anyone who comes here with a completely traditional mind has to start with embracing, I don't want to say a brand new front, but you have to be willing to want to embrace it. It is what's happening in society. Yeah. There are certain things in society that were taboos a hundred years ago that we will not be talking about, that have become, you know, things that are they're instituting in law today. And this is how societies change. And so if you think about it from the point where society can amend laws, you know, to incorporate the thinking of the new age, you know, yeah. and these things become, and I'm not saying all of them are right. I'm just saying the principle of understanding that it is possible for certain things that you have always learned to become archaic and not serve you anymore. And it's okay for you to let them go. Now, I'm a Nigerian guy. There are certain things I still believe in. I still believe in, you know, certain traditional things my parents raised me with, you know, those things of, you know, trying to take care of a woman, you know, even if in an age today, it's like, you know, we're all equals. I get that, but I still believe that as a man, my responsibility is to my woman and my family, you know, yeah. there is a certain balance to that now where, you know, everyone is contributing to that, you know, mm -hmm. I still think that I, how you raise children, you know, conversations are good. I think discipline is still important. I live in a society where discipline may be, you know, something that is frowned upon, but as a Nigerian, I still think that it's important to just bring yeah. your child when that time comes. You know, yes. it will may not be the go-to, you know, but it's on the table, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but if you have a great child, then you won't need to. You're just going to do yourself a great disservice and you're probably not going to move up the ranks as much as you should. That's what I think. That's actually very well said. Perfectly well said. And yeah. It's interesting. Though, I, and I can't even lie to you. I don't agree with everything that culture is throwing out today and that society is throwing yeah. out today. I don't. It's okay if I don't understand mm. everything. And I've learned not to impose my understanding of or lack of understanding of something as an opposition to someone else's truth. As I get older, I also realize that, is that my... Is this how you've true. always been? Or do you think that living out here sort of... I think just more that. and more. Right. More and more. Right. I think it, it has more to do with age, the older age. Right. 
And then the older I got, I realized that my most precious resource is my time and my energy. Mm. And there's no way on earth I'm going to squander that. Right. I don't get it. It's fine. <laughs> right. But I'm not against this just because I don't get right. it. Right. And I'm not going, going to invest all this time, energy, and emotional turmoil. <laughs> <laughs> I scatter my internal res- <laughs> reservoir of peace. Right. Just so you understand why I'm upset that I don't get it. Right. I don't even, I'm not even upset. Like, okay, we there. There's no problem. <laughs> you know? Oh. It's fine. And for me, it comes from a place of just deep acceptance of things that I will never understand. Right. And mm. learning to love the people behind those I- ideas nonetheless. Right. I like that last part, learning to love the people behind, which is back to the thing where I say accepting the humanity of, because at the end of the day, you're dealing with human beings. Yes. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There was this talk about somebody who had switched his gender. Right. And the whole world went nuts. Right. The entire world went nuts. And I couldn't understand it. I couldn't understand both. I don't understand switching your gender. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand the amount of uproar that people are giving. And when I sat down to speak to some people and they were so, oh my God, da, 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 I said, okay, fine. This person has said, this is my problem. Mm-hmm. I don't feel safe as a male. Right. Let's just say a male. I am unhappy. I am depressed. I'm anxious. I don't like my life. Blah, 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 blah. That's fine. That's a problem. You see, my issue is for the people who are condemning so strongly, mm-hmm. are you willing to do anything in your life to help this person at that point of conflict and struggle? Right. Even if it's a phone call to check on them once a week, how are you? Right. Hope you have not killed yourself. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> how are you feeling? Yeah. Even if it's an email to say, I'm here for you if you want to. Right. Don't worry. Just anything. Nothing. And not even most family members or friends are willing to invest this amount of care and attention that is interesting. into people. How much more somebody that you don't even know? But then, first of all, the person has a problem. Right. The thing is, there's a lack of support in helping them deal with that problem right. from all the people who have opinions. Right. Do you understand? Yep. Yeah. So the person now says, oh, I can't deal with this. So my only way to continue in this life, which I don't understand, right. is to do this so that I can survive this pain or whatever I'm going through. Right. Then the person takes the time and effort to do this, which is hard enough. Right. It definitely which has is. already ostra- ostracized it, it, exactly. you from society. Like you already know. That is you already know it's funny. going to be hard. Yeah. You already know that your life just forgets. It. Yeah. But then... Everybody that I know who has suffered, either with um, gender issues, Mm -hmm. sexuality issues, abuse issues, they have a point of that struggle where it's kind of like a nucleus that condenses and then explodes. The point when it explodes is when they decide to do something about it. Right. You can't really change them or influence. You can just have an opinion. But, But at that point where it's condensing into something else, if the world showed up, with even a word of I'm here, I see. You. Right. Uh-huh. Right. So my problem is always with the people who have so much to say. Right. And I always check it in the people around me. Like, why do you care so much? <laughs> <laughs> why do you care so much? Like, you're not willing to do anything to help this person in their problem. Yeah. Like me, I know I will not call you to ask you oh God, how is your, <laughs> your situation. So I don't even talk if you decide to handle it in your own way. Right. It's the way you've decided to handle it. The best way, according to me, maybe it's not the best, but then this is me just judging, right. not wearing your shoes. So that's how I feel about it. Well, I want to ask you about any profoundly positive act of kindness you have received. That I have received. From a foreigner, not from a Nigerian, from a foreigner abroad when you lived. Because many people expect that your interaction uh-huh. can be unpleasant. Uh-huh. Many people expect a certain level of bias when you go abroad. Right. I can't say how many times I say, oh, I'm going to this country. And people tell me, oh, that country, they are this, they are that, they are that. And they just say like all the negative things. But I know for a fact that people can surprise you in the most wonderful ways. Right. Even in your career. And you could meet one person that just does something so out of character. And it's so kind. And it just warms your heart. And you're like, yes, this is beautiful. Yeah. 
I mean, the one that comes to mind, which, you know, I will be eternally grateful to her for, you know, that has set me on the path I am now. Sam Kele and I, we did the, what's it called? Rising Star program at uh, mm-hmm. TIFF 2016, uh, Toronto International Film Festival. And the Rising Star program was, you know, they take new faces in the business, Canadian citizens. And at the time, some people and I were not even citizens. But that year, there was a spotlight on Lagos, so some people and I got in. And they take us, you know, give us a five-day expose on what the business is like, introduce us to all these people, you know, and stuff, you know. And we did that, you know. We come away from that. The next year, I was going to Berlin for the film festival. I think I had a film there where I was doing a talent. No, I was doing a talent campus there. And what usually happens is when you sign up for these things, they have like a delegates list, and they usually publish the delegates list. And so the list was published, and I get a phone call from the lady. Her name is Nicole Nicole Hilliard Ford. She was in charge of the Rising Star program when I was there. Mm-hmm. This is a year after. She sends me a message and says, hey, Osi, I see you're going to be in Berlin. Oh, blah, blah, blah. I'm also in Berlin. We should meet up. And you know, I'm like, oh, cool, cool. And so we have dinner. And she's asking me, so, so how's it going? Like, have you been penetrating the industry? I said, look, I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm looking for an agent, you know. And obviously, you know, having an agent out here is probably one of the most crucial things to you know, tidy. Yeah. And she's like, so who have you been meeting? You know, I told her the people. And she's like, hmm. Maybe I should set up some meetings for you, you know. I was like, seriously? And she was like, yeah. Yeah. And she set up four meetings for me. And one of those four people, you know, is my agent today that I've had since 2016. Yes. So when I moved to Canada, I didn't have to worry about getting an agent. So Nicole set that up for me and, you know, that's, um, you know, just really grateful to her that she did that. Yeah. Well, yeah. oh, that's really powerful. Yeah. When I ask a question, I, I am honestly, I was ready to be surprised, <laughs> but this is a home there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad that you. That's it. Can you please do something about the Western media and this African accent? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But this is this not is... a joke, though. It's terrible. Yeah, Why it's they not do a that? joke. There's, uh, they say, oh, a Nigerian <laughs> prince. What's his name? They'll now pick one name from Senegal and pick another name from X. It's like they do the bare minimum. Yeah. There's nothing like an African accent. See, I'd have to... Why don't they just get it? I... Can you please just... Please, eh? It... Intercede on our behalf. This, year, it's, it's this is why idea. I've realized that, you know, this thing is bigger than me. You know, and it's also part of the reasons why I have to keep going. Because for me now, this has gone beyond, you know, I want to be popular, you know. Because yeah. if you ask me, I would prefer to have a stack of cash and nobody will know me. Because <laughs> I'm a very private yeah. guy. That's what I would prefer. Unfortunately, the job that I do is not that way. So it's gone beyond that point where it's about, you know, being popular and, you know, rolling with the big boys. It's a... Like, there are certain things that we just have to change. Whether it is the <laughs> idea of um, how they see Africans in general, what do you oh, think our God. accents are like? It's really bad. How we the are represented, one. you know. Yeah. Still? Yeah. I thought that maybe they represent us better in the entertainment industry. To be honest with you, I think that some things are changing. And part of the reasons yeah. why I know some things are changing is because they are also beginning to set up shop in in most of these the film hubs in africa and so what happens with that is when you set up hubs there and you develop original content from there you actually start seeing and then hopefully this is where i'm hoping it will crisscross when you now want actual representations from say your u.s or north american office you can actually talk to your people in africa and see Oh, do we have actors who are bloody, 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 blah? I will tell mm. you the truth. The reason I understand it is because at the end of the day, film is still a business and it makes it sense is. for them to hire somebody who has numbers but says he can do the accents than to hire somebody who. Can has... you see how my eyes just close? Yeah, like... but it is sad. We have more than 200 actors. You see, like... that's the thing. What is this? Yeah, exactly. But you see. They just. And 
use accent from lion <coughs> use it as a template it's you. this is the reason why <laughs> i have to have an international career i agree that and maybe in the generation of our children hopefully hmm. we would have shared our stories enough and taken charge of our own stories that the world what they know what they are holding on might just be one side of a story of who we once were right and perhaps some of the stories that are still being told could be maybe one part of a story of who some of us still are right but that there's so much more than that yeah. so 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 much more we have so many stories we have so many people we have so many cities so many cultures i can't help but feel it's fascinating and frustrating at the same time yeah to have the whole continent matches this one big part yeah and slapped on a plate yeah. <laughs> this is who you are yeah even you just know? the littlest things of saying where exactly you're traveling to that i think that's the one that yeah. really gets me into today so oh yeah so i went back to africa the other day i'm just like exactly no, i don't sir, like that you know you, say, where, where, where did you go there are 50 countries on the continent you didn't yeah. go to africa yeah. you went to a specific country what is that country and a particular city yeah and what is that city you know so yeah. even little things like that make me just feel like you people don't want to try it. But you see, let me tell you the bigger issue. I, I really join hopes with you. You know, I feel like the bigger issue is that the, and I have to be careful how I say this, but that the communities of the Nigerians and by extension, the Africans that are, you know, in whatever part of the West that they are, begin to form just whether me. it happens consciously or it just happens, you know, very organically is the word I was looking for. Yeah. Those communities need to become bigger and stronger in the West because it changes how you see people. We yeah. have a lot of community in the West. Yeah. But the thing is, again, our communities are very divided along the lines of whether it is tribe, whether it is rich and poor, whether it is, you know. Yeah. And again, Nigeria has had a really bad reputation for a long time. So the, uh, you're understanding when people go into the West and decide not to yeah. associate because you don't want them yeah. to say, oh, these Nigerians have come. And then there are people who go yeah. into the West and go into a Nigerian community like they are still living in Nigeria. Imagine the insane amount. All yeah. we can talk about is trickles of people who are doing well here in medicine. here in. But you and I know that the amount of Nigerians living in the West is insane. Phenomenal. it's yeah. insane and i wish that those communities you know because that will make a difference that's actually one of the goals of this podcast oh to share our story that is nice i call it a conversation library oh it's I a conversation that. library of who we are right you know i believe it's a conversation library of who we are the challenges we faced yeah. and how we became this to be called a success story right that that's really have. good I hope, I hope. No, honestly, it really is. And I, <laughs> I, try my best. I, I really hope that... The, what's that saying now? Mm. It's you, you don't know how far this thing will go. <sighs> that we can become better than the way the world sees us. No, I'm saying that your podcast will actually do the thing that you are... Like, oh my I'm God, God, please let us say No, that. honestly, <laughs> because think about it, you know, it's also a... There are so many podcasts, but then to find podcasts that are specific to either certain people, certain subjects, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, and have the authentic authenticity of you come from where you come from. So yeah. you're not just lumped under the black umbrella. You are, oh, you yeah. know, you also, this is who you this are. Is who this you is are, where you came you know? from. This is where you were. Yeah. This is. I really hope that. I think for me, that was, there were two main reasons to start this podcast. Mm -hmm. The first was what I just said to you. I'm hoping to have like a, a library of conversations right. with people of immigrant backgrounds who have gone out of where they are born yeah. and shining. The second is to have a place where the people who associate with immigrants uh -huh. or employ them, because that's another thing. They don't understand us. They don't know us. They don't have any context. They really they don't. don't. Have the context of what, what they know, what they've heard, what has been sold to them for the last 500 yes. years. Yes. Uh, don't have water. 
Those fights with each other. <laughs> 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 oh my god no, no, my love, this is funny i'm hoping that somebody who really wants to understand how to work with mm. who these people are where they're coming from you can go to the show and say oh we just employed ismaila from nigeria right. or abdul from any other country right. he is he's from this is this is this and he's working in tech they can go to, to the episode and see, oh, in this episode 52, there was Miss BC, whatever. Mm-hmm. She also is from Nigeria and works in tech. Let's listen to that. Right. To give me some context so I can better understand this person, so I can know how best to work with him, right. so that we are both happy in this interaction. Right. Osi, thank you so much for joining us on the show. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> And dedicating all this fun and laughter <laughs> and all the wonderful insights that you shared. We are the last part of the show and I just have some questions for you. It's kind of like a tradition. Right. And so two questions, mm-hmm. one word answers, and then one question that was given to you by the last guest. Oh, okay. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. What is one word that describes your personal philosophy at this point in your life? Peace, I guess. Peace. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. I love that. Mm. What is one word that your closest friends or family would use to describe you? Volatile, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if volatile is the exact word, but is it volatile? And it's not flighty, but they can't. Hmm. They, they, they don't. They can't hold me down. Basically. Fluid. Let's go with fluid. Yes. Let's fluid, yes. right? Because volatile has like negative connotations. But I don't yeah. think they think of me negative. But yeah, let's go with fluid. Fluid. Yes. Nice. Yeah. So the question to you from the last guest is, what will you do to make a difference in the world? I think that I will just um, try and focus on my little corner. And the reason I say that is, you know, it's that ripple effect that eventually affects the world where it's like, yeah. you know, this is the one God gave me to do. Yeah. So let me do it and let me offload all the ideas that he's given, you know, and, you know, eventually be able to take back some things home and stuff. And just in my corner, as long as I'm doing what I'm doing, I think that will have the effect that it needs to, because it's me, then someone else, then someone else, and that ripple effect carries on. Nice. Yeah. Ripple effect. Yeah. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. So my last question, mm-hmm. we would like you to craft a question for the next guest on the show. Oh, I see. <laughs> so we keep, we keep passing it so <laughs> That is very nice, actually. <laughs> that is very nice. What advice would you give to people who are struggling with the balance between their pursuit of career and their married life? Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. What advice would you give to people struggling with the balance between career? And, you know, married life, because married life is a full time job, you know, career is a full time job, you know, yeah. and what, what would your advice be? How would you how would you advise them to navigate it? Basically. OK. Yeah. Wow. The next guest has something. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a very important aspect, you know, that's. Yeah. Also, oh, this has been brilliant. Huh? It's been it's you. wonderful. This makes up for all the it's time been... that I haven't spoken to you. Believe me. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> it has been so wonderful having you. Thank you. It's been, Thank you for and, saying yes. Thank you for your time. Yeah, an absolute, absolute beautiful time here. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on it. It's my pleasure. Hi guys, it's It's Your Right Summer here. I want to thank you so much for watching because if you're here and you're seeing this, it means you watch the show all the way to the end and you have my thanks. If you like the content, if you thought it was helpful to you or to somebody else, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and also to share it amongst other people that could benefit from it. We're a really young channel and we're really hoping to grow and attract other expatriates, other international business professionals, other immigrants who are thriving in business and dominating globally. We're trying to attract them to come on the show and share their experiences, their knowledge, their wisdom that can be helpful for others who share a similar context to them. So until next time, enjoy yourself, enjoy your life, enjoy your work.